Come on, it's out of box. Come on, it's out of box. YouTube. Cheers and welcome to the basement 2018. My name is Bruce Lively and I'm D-Boy Slim and the basement is the first daily hip-hop debate show. From Tuesday to Friday we tackle the most intriguing topics in hip-hop culture and the world around it. There's been a lot of holidays, a lot of this and that back and forth so we're starting this week off on Wednesday but it's a good one. Welcome back basement family. Today is a simple one. The best diss song of 2017. This year, it really wasn't that many to choose from. Most beefs were fallouts from songs or, or, or things that happened in 2016. But there were a few, and we chose the best. So, today's question. The best diss song of 2017. With that being said, hmm. Lego. Yo, we back. We back. It's the basement 2018. First show of the 2018. My man. Good to see you again, yes, man. Yes, sir. We back. Um, as Bruce alluded to, which he he had to remind me. But I'm like, yo, it was a lot of this so I, you know, I'm I, you know, I kind of came up with like, yo, let's let's do the best this song of the last year. And I'm thinking like, yo, it's it's a lot of uh it was a lot of this songs last year, but uh Bruce had to remind me that a lot of them came at the end of 2016. Right. And so and what we saw was the fallout that happened throughout the year. And that's, hundred shots. That's correct. Crazy. The joint with Meek and Game and, and all of that. I'm, I'm like, yo, that was last year. But but yeah, that was at the you know, Nikki and Remy. I was at the end of last year, so, um, but the one that stood out to me was the one that just happened, and I, it took me no time. It's probably the reason why that 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 the, the topic for the show even came to me like that, but because Mace, um, when Mace decided to <laughs> come back out after all of these years, and. Uh, I mean, for lack of better words, he cooked Cameron. Let's just be honest. He destroyed him. We uh, we could dice it up and dissect it however y'all want to. I've heard all of the, you know, oh, he wasn't, uh, it wasn't a hundred percent accurate, or you know, Cameron is this to the streets and Mace did that, and well, however you want to dissect it, you can feel free. That's you know, it's you know, I'm quite. It's your opinion. A lot of you have followed, you know, as I have over the years, what's going on with Cameron, Mace, and all the players uptown and in Harlem. Um, but on this particular song, <laughs> um, Mace, uh, Mace reminded us <laughs> who was actually the first one to blow up out of Harlem, mm. start the Harlem World Movement. Mm. Yo, remind me, uh, when people are dissecting, I hear a lot about the sister comment, and Andy F your sister. Ever since 10, you was a thirsty nigga. I ain't gonna talk about the time you fucked your sister. You had a, you, you knew where this, what is this coming from? Because can't say he doesn't have a sister. What, what is, where is it coming from? What, you say he was referencing a cousin or something? That's a good question right there. That's why he's Moose. Uh, in his earlier albums, I believe it was Sex, Drugs, and Entertainment, or it may have been the first. That was the second album. It may have been the first one or the second one. He has in, Cameron, right? Cameron has in reference talking about he may have mistakenly fucked the aunt or something. Oh, okay. Y'all can quote me on that. Go back and do do your history, do your research. And those of y'all who are day one Cameron fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. And y'all probably knew what 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 Mace was talking about when he said that. I'm not. It wasn't. I don't think it was assisted. Cameron's not lying about the fact he doesn't have a sister. But in his earlier music, he he says something about he might have smashed his aunt or some something like that, or cousin. It may have been a cousin, cousin or aunt, something like that, something to that effect. But um, that's the only. So thing. he was just kind of referencing that he I, said right. your sister. It but, may rhyme, it may have fit the line or whatever, yeah. but uh, yeah. But it comes from a real place. It does come from a real place. Okay. Um, okay. That was an excellent question. And uh, for that is another part of the, like, 
the the flow was brilliant. It was it was nothing short of immaculate. And I, again, it reminded us when he showcased those skills. I, I, what he said? I, I chew this nigga to my teeth hurt. Won't even hit the weed first. Yeah. Like, trap me in the feet. You singing? They gon' be no backup bitch with me. I chew that nigga to my teeth first. Don't even hit the weed first. Bitches used to say I'm blessing. I ain't even sneeze first. Tax know you as the nigga that snitch on the rock. DC Crips only know you the nigga they shot. OG niggas don't have no history with you on the block And everybody seen the footage you got it just reminded us like Mace can go. Let's just be honest about it. Mace can go. Mace is one of the nicest ever to come out of Harlem. Y'all could name your top five and I don't know who has Big L where, who has Mace there, who has Cameron there, but Mace has to be up there. For, that's a fact. Like that's Top five coming sure. out of Harlem. Yeah. Or just for yeah, sure. For okay. sure. Yeah. You know, um... He's one of the nicest, you know, out that era. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and that's the era of the big, the Nas's, the, 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 you know, the J, the locks, um, mm -hmm. Maul Deeps and, and Black Moon Smith. Out of that Wu Tang, like that era there, Mace was one of the nicest. So, um, it just reminded us of that. I don't wanna uh, uh drag this on, but um the bars were there. The personals, I mean, you know, when he start to get personal and all of that, you know, Huddy and Big L and, you know, all them dudes, like, we never even heard Mace talk about over the years. Mm -hmm. These are guys that have passed on that we knew grew up with Cam and Mace. Oh, man, it was it was heavy. Like, I, 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 I thoroughly... Then he took the, the beat. The, the, the beat, beat was classic, of course. I didn't even get to that. The beat was classic. When you, to rap over a Jay-Z beat, you, you got to be knowing what you're doing out there. You got to be knowing what you're doing. What we mean when we say you choose a Jay-Z beat in the hip-hop culture, it means something what beat you choose. And if you choose to rhyme over somebody who's considered a top five person or Thanks. one of the best, Give you analogy. if you mess up on that, you mess up your career. Give it's analogy. over with. You know, if Chris Brown ever touches a Marvin Gaye song. Right. That's, that's big. <laughs> That's why you're here. Analogy? That's why you're here. That's a good analogy. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. It means something. That means something. You're talking about classic music, a classic, legendary, iconic artist. You can't mess it up. You you have to do it justice. And and Mace did it justice. So So now I'm gonna disagree with you after all of that. <laughs> Listen, people. Basement family. There's a diss song. And then there's the diss song. Mace hit all the right points. He rapped over a Jay-Z beat. He did it right from the, it, it was the way a diss song is, is done when you're doing, talking about a diss song. But then there's a guy who talks to you like your father. And he's not trying to diss you. He's trying to help you by pointing out your flaws <laughs> and hoping that you grow from them. Mm -hmm. That is my song. When he dissed Troy Ave in a song called Discipline. Right now is one, I mean, my song just doesn't get that many clicks and he's, he's already looking at a couple hundred thousand views for that one because there's a diss song and then there's the this song when the guy says to you, let me let me just give you a couple quotes so you understand where he was going with this. It's less about, you know, you did this and you did that. He says things like, although you move so fake, I'm just trying to talk to the real nigga inside of you, son. Damn! <laughs> like, like uh, you got beef, they shoot. We said that's banger. They kill banger. They said they kill banger. You shoot, you hit nothing, and you a gangster. It's the jewel. It's things that he he's hoping that Troy Ev right now as he's sitting in, in his bedroom, he's hoping that he contemplates these words and becomes a better person for it. That that kind of a diss song, and my son is so good at this. You heard it in his freestyle on Flex. You heard it in his joint on BT Cipher. Uh, BT Cipher. You heard it in his song with Hobson when he when he showed the other side of of what Hobson was talking about in his song. I believe it was a uh, uh, Ill Mind number seven or something like number five, something like that. But this is my song is so good at at being your father. 
My son is so good at telling you the sideways joint and you didn't even catch it until later. All you could say was, that's true. Whoever told you the way you moving is real was lying. They trying to get you killed. I'm trying to get you to chill. You making too many enemies. You lost and you give off the wrong energy. Nigga, you'll never see respect that I got. Ain't nothing pock about you. Except you got shot Humble yourself, you got bullets large in your noggin Limping off the cart, you facing all type of charges And still selling these fairy tales and mirages You know, yeah, you know when your uncle talking like that You right, you right You didn't even catch that he was really dissing you All you did was learn from it And, and because it comes from a place of love That's what I realized there's nothing. My son can't give a, a diss song like Mace did. He can't just go in and call this boy or something or this one or something. He really loves the people. He loves his people. He came out of jail with, with a whole different mindset, and you can hear it in his rhymes. And so when it comes to diss track, when you when you pass the level of just I'm dissing you, and you turn into the father figure that wants the man to grow up to become something, it's almost like it's almost like it's not a diss. This is a this is a, a a blueprint for your life, young man. Listen to what I'm telling you, and you might actually get better. The way he does it, you nothing like there's nothing like Pac about you, except you got shot. <clears throat> Pac is rolling over in his grave. He said, "It's just potent. It's just potent. It's more potent when you can tell it comes from a real uh, a, a place." <laughs> Listen, <laughs> like my son. What we begin to to, to, to to enter is the realm of uh subjective. And it's all subjective. Um because then it becomes what do you prefer when you listen to a diss? Facts. Me myself personally, I like to see you dissing somebody. I like to see you dissing somebody. You suck. Now, Bruce has pointed out the fact that you can pull certain jewels. And, and certain knowledge out of uh, a my son diss. I could easily argue the Troy, the Troy Ave song dissing my song may have been better than my song song dissing Troy Ave. Mm. Um, when he rapped over the pop beat and got into why my song did the seven, eight years in prison that he did and why he's on his teaching flow as it is. That's neither here nor there because the debate is what was the best this song Again, we pointed out the fact that Mace already, you know, he already challenged himself in rapping over a Jay-Z beat. So you know it had to be quality of that type of standard. And, uh, 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 you know, he held himself to, to, to those type of standards. But again, we haven't heard Mace in... Yeah. I mean, it's big when a dude comes back right. out the woodwork. Like, <laughs> hip hop, any music, it's, it, it's big when a dude comes four, back out the woodwork. Five like years? We may have heard him once or twice over the last 10 years. Like, he came back with the welcome back joint and then he, the D unit for a split second. You know, and he had one little joint that was on the radio buzzing for a hot second, but we may have heard him twice in 10, 15 years, maybe. So for him to come back, like, it wasn't nothing, like you know what I'm saying. Like it was crazy, uh, uh, but um, and like I said, I don't want to understate the fact that the flow was crazy. Like the flow, it, you, like you realize that it's only few out here that can really do it like that. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's only a few, and I'm not even so sure. Cameron on his best day, like you could give Cameron a few more tries at it. Nah, you can't come back. You know what I'm that. saying? And and you know, Mace is just nice at, at at what he does. And so we forgot that he was that nice because it's been so long. He that's why he got signed. That's why Biggie got signed. Like they were rappers. It wasn't just old Mace the pretty boy. So, but I want to I want to go to another part though. So it is subjective, but it's a debate, and so we have to find reasons why I think that even even objectively you can look at it and we have a word we have a word when you diss somebody so tough that they can't come back and it's called sunning them mm. you got sun some of y'all may remember that word we still probably use it few of us yo don't sun the dude like that man you got you get the sun yo you trying to sun me 
What that means is you're acting like my father. You're turning me into your son. When you son somebody, that's that's where that's what it came from. And so you say that yo he's acting like a dad, but he, this is the epitome of a diss. It's it's just a different way of doing it. If you look at two different poets, one's gonna say, uh, you know, look at the sun shining through the window, and Shakespeare would say, oh, hark, the sun peers through the glass of whatever. You know, so the way that you say it. Is, is the difference, but the epitome of the diss track is sunning somebody. Sunning somebody to the point where they can't come back. Troy Ab did have a dope one over the pod beat, but he couldn't come back after my son sunned him. Everything he said was true. Everything he said is something you need to think about as a human being and as a person. And I'm gonna end it like this. Um, as far as the beat goes, yeah, he chose Jay-Z, which is always, it's just, it means something when you do good over that, because that's pressure. But in classic My Son style, what he did was, he got the local dudes, Marco Polo, and decided he was going to do it over that. Because that's what he is. That's who he is. It's, even the beat he chooses is a statement of where he's at in his life, and his career, and as a person. I'm going to go get the dude over here who I think is nice that doesn't have the shine and put him on. And everything about it, it just screams my son, the new my son. He's back and he did it right, man. Mace, let me wrap this up. Go ahead. Mace had the best diss song of 2017 and for every reason that we just stated and more. Um, he showcased the, first of all, the song, the, the, the song itself was longer than my songs. And, and Mace didn't stop on it. He didn't take a pause. It wasn't a breath. It wasn't a hook. Nothing. He just went straight in on it. Um, yeah, that matters. The, 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 right. So the flow is longer. And he showcased, as we as we keep trying to uh, express and get through it, he showcased the flow that's... that's that's it's, it's a let's be honest, it's a lost art form. That's no disrespect to any of the dudes. We know the Kendricks, the J. Coles, the dudes that really do what they do out here today. Davies, Don Q. But... You know, for the most part, you know, you know, you hear dudes that tell you you spitting the hot 16 and all, it doesn't really matter to them anymore like that. It's not really important like that. The beat, you know, as long as the beat is fire or whatever the case, dudes sound like other dudes, like dudes sound like other dudes and from other parts of the country. And copying the styles. So, it, it, you know, That's what but it is. like I said, it. It is a it is a lost art form like the mid range jump shot in the NBA and um I just think May showcased that for a long period of time and like I said he got personal there was there was truths and facts and he did it to the one of the bullies in New York one of the bullies of Harlem this guy is not Troy Ave Cameron is not Troy Ave Cameron actually has legitimate platinum albums mm. so this wasn't no he got he went plenty. Yeah, come home with me when Platinum on Rockefeller. You already know that we came on, but um, so this wasn't no, you know, no, no, no light, no light contender that he was, he was, he was going up against. And uh, like I said, he went, he swung. Well, actually, they said what started the beef was the Cameron mixtape, but May swung, and and that was pretty much the end of the fight. Period. Like, um, it's up to you guys. Who, who wins? Y'all let us know the Oracle from Mace or. Or Discipline by My Song. The Let's best, go, best was, song of the, seven, of the 17. And listen to them. Listen to them words. See, see who wins. Uh, this is a toss-up, but a lot of people, I'm sure, is going to say Mace. But I know there's a few out there that's going to say My Song. Listen, before we end this, I got a lot of shout-outs, man. Mm -hmm. We got like 20 new subscribers over the weekend. And, I'm, and they just keep on rolling in. It's, it's amazing the love that you guys are showing to this show. So... Like I said I would, it's time to shout you guys out. Get, get prepared, it's gonna take a little minute. Don Polo, appreciate you. Uh, Big the Pig, Rep 666 Clothing, sucking them and still got killed. He should have rep Twinkies. Much love, Pac the Don Caluminati. That's why they mad. <laughs> now, of course you already know. Was that in reference to? Uh, that, that was uh, Funk Flex and all of that. Listen, Don Polo, facts, I'm still trying to decipher your codes, <laughs> but uh, you got it, man. Don Polo, appreciate you so much, man. Hit that subscribe button, tell your friends. Joel Joseph, appreciate your comment. 
said Jay won the war, Jay won the first two battles, stop with the bullshit, Ether versus Takeover, Nas took that. Mm. That's facts, I think I said that, but I said there's other battles. Appreciate that, Joel Joseph. Uh, Rogue Ronin, stop condoning these ignorant AF boys, all right? Don't allow them in your neighborhood, stop protecting them, saying they don't have no other outlets, uh, I found it on a job. And of course, that was with our, our Chicago our political rant mm. that he's saying, making excuses for gang members. Rogue Rogan, I appreciate that. And you, you, you know, your point is well taken. Jacqueline Walker, another person on the Chicago joint. Gang folks need to stop tripping. It's not all about Trump. You went in, you went in further than I was talking about. But hey, Jacqueline Walker, you deserve your point too. Y'all go check out her her uh, her statement. Joel Teague. He was responding to King Nerd Killer. Both of you are two new subscribers and two new uh, commenters. Appreciate it. Joel Teague says, "I live in Alabama. I'm white and I'm my own business. And the police have been." known to give me problems for no reason. That's facts. It's not about white or black. It's about power and money versus no power and no money. If you aren't a judge's son, if you're not somebody who matters to the police or pays a bill, you too can be harassed. That's why Black Lives Matter is not just about us. It's about speaking truth to power. And that's what we're talking about on this show, especially. Appreciate you, Joel Teague. Another one, King Nerd Killer. Uh, appreciate you. you got, y'all check out what he said. Big time shout out to King Nerd Killer. Sandra Johnson, new subscriber. Appreciate you. Uh, had no way to get in touch with you, so I hope you're watching right now. Thank you so much, Sandra Johnson. Robert Bay, last one. Read that one, man. I'm going off. So Big Crit was nice, but Black Thor Freestyle was inferno. How can y'all put Crit to Black? OMG, this way the game is trash. That's this is this is way what he meant why with why the, the yeah. game is trash now because of y'all not being real. I appreciate be the comments. Black Thor was crazy nice. Nobody saying he wasn't nice, but come on now, don't act like the crit wasn't fired. We appreciate though that the the the, the freestyle from Thor was Inferno though. It was Inferno. Listen, that's it, everybody. Robert Bay, Sandra Johnson, King Nerd Killer, Joel T, Jacqueline Walker, Rogue Ronan, Joel Joseph, and Don Polo. And, and there's more, because I didn't even get to all of them yet. So we appreciate y'all. Y'all keep watching. Tell your friends. Hit that subscribe button. Press that bell so you know when we upload. We in the new year. We doing it big. Let's get it. The basement. We back. Peace.